Greetings, welcome to Reggae TV. I'm Mr. Rich, thank you for joining us. The Tamlins are our guest today. Not a name that you think of immediately in reggae music, but I guarantee you've heard them countless times and haven't even realized it. They're the most recognized backup singers in reggae music, a quality band with an enduring history that shouldn't be overlooked. The Tamlins have lent their precise harmonies both on the road and in the studio to people like Peter Tosh, John Holt, Gregory Isaacs, and many more. In addition to their own career of live shows, albums, and hit singles, like their version of Randy Newman's Baltimore, which we'll hear later in the show. In fact, we're going to be hearing a lot of singing in today's episode. So kick back and get ready to meet one of the greatest dub vocal bands in reggae music. It's Tamlin's time on Reggae TV. The Tamlins should be considered the Crosby, Stills, and Nash of reggae music. Their delicate harmonies have enhanced artists like Peter Tosh, Marcia Griffiths, The Paragons, many of the top artists in reggae music. They've toured the world and have played in Yard. They bring class to the music they sing, and very simply put, are the stuff that reggae legends are made of. Tamlin started about over 40 years ago, the Tamlins. You know, way down in the late 60s. We don't, one of the original members was Winston, Winston Morgan. They're joining us since 83, 1983. Well, actually, he and I start off together. That's where we start off as. Cut and I, from school, school days. You started at school clubs and all of that, you know, school shows and, you know, even some churches actually sing, you know. And we used to go on our little clubs and all of that too. So, um, but then I went off to Bermuda for a while. And then that's where he met Morgan. And then I said to myself, now I gotta form a group because Junior went away. <laughs> so I found a group with a guy called Sam. And I saw Morgan went to do an audition for JBC Variety Showcase. And I met him and I said, listen, I wanna form a group, man, you know, I have this guy named Sam. But my friend Junior is in Bermuda. So I formed a group with me and Morgan and Sam. And we started to rehearse. And then I was singing with the Falcons band. Me and Scotty yeah. and Falcons. all the great guys come to the Lord Park, everybody sings a slash. All the great singers. Dennis Brown was the was a little guy who lived at the house with Miss Ivy. And then I was working at a telephone company just behind. So Juna came back from Bermuda and we just formed the group again and we just started singing with rehearse. That's it. That's about 1969, uh, 68, 68. 70 June I came back and we started the shows and we started to do um, clubs. And then we did a recording with um, Sound Dimension produced by Winston Blake with Fab Five. So we did a song called The Sweetest Thing This Side of Heaven. The sweetest Thing This Side of Heaven. But um, it didn't release. The bank seized the tape. There went into some liquidation the bank seized the tape. So we just said, all right, we're going to record for a guy called Ed Wallace. He's the manager of Fab Five Band. Mm. With, um, everybody plays full. 26 on the charts. And then, yeah, that was, yeah, the, that you was know. the first rec recording yeah. single. Everybody plays a fool. Sometimes. Sometimes. No, no exception to the rule. Listen, baby. Everybody plays a fool. Ooh, falling in love is such an easy thing to do There is no guarantee that the one you love Is gonna love you Everybody plays a fool sometimes No exception to the rules Listen baby Everybody plays a fool That was it yeah, then after everybody that, plays a fool. Peer shows, peer shows, then recordings, apparently, Black Beauty albums, doing a lot of backing vocals, a lot of singers, Dennis Brown, Greg Grisax, all the singers have been backing vocals. Plus, I was working at JBC at the time, so I was closer to the music now. Come, come, come. 
we start out doing nightclubs. Nightclubs. Mm -hmm. Nightclubs. And then we do um, the recording, everybody plays a fool. And then in the meantime, we do back in with the jingles also. Jingles in a commercial oh. for a guy named Mid Wallace, you know. And, um, and those Meritone. And Meritones. Turntable time. Yeah, you know, Meritones yeah. had a show called VIP Exposure. VIP, right. Um, right. That's where um, Barry Simon was founded. Jacob Miller. And the Mighty Diamonds. Mighty Diamonds, yeah. Meditations, yeah. Rascavi. Yeah. All the great singers came out of that amateur show. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason for that, Mertones, Winston Blake was doing a, as an MC in Spanish Town, a place called yeah. Um, yeah. Spanish yeah. Town Town yeah. Hall with Fab yeah. Five. And we were the we were a guest, yeah. guest artist on the show. So he said, "Boy, I can't believe you guys are sound so good." So the, in Jamaica, there must be talents here good as you guys so i have this inspiration to the show at vip so i'm so okay let's let's go and we go there and all the great guys come on charlie Svan, it's a bit els angel third world guys came up there all the bands and solis come there very very salmon scotty never look back never look back let's keep going 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 shows recording backing vocals never look back We live in the uptown, I mean, where we really, you know, St. Andrew. St. Andrew, in the year, St. Andrew, yeah. In, in the 70s, you know, regular was booming, and, you know, a lot of clubs, you know, VIP, Tiffy Tat Club, the Light Parks, Slant Robbie, uh, a lot of clubs on Reddy's Road. People yeah, jammed the nightclub yeah. at night time. Reddy's, street, Reddy's Road was like on the 42nd Street. Yes, never closed. <laughs> yeah, never closed. Never Always closed. going. <laughs> like every other two, three months, we work at this club, this, that club. And um, the thing is, on Reddy's Road, Every club have their own crowd. Yeah. Yeah, if the spaces, you know, because you can't get too stale. Yeah. yeah. And those are the days, those are the days, you know, people um, just love you as a singer. You, 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 you feel important, very important, as, a, as you coming up as singers, you know. So, in, in, and, and in those days, it's like, we, we, we never miss a pay the money in the mind. We just, just, just feel good to be singing. Well, music and sing. Music. Yeah. Yeah, that's what was in us, music, the singing. You know, yeah. feel proud to be a singer, feel proud. And, and there was so much things to kind of uh, detect you from that. You know, you know I must tell you, um, we used to inspire by a lot of American artists. Amer like a lot of American artists. Impressions, Delphonics. Delphonics was my favorite. And the Moments. The spinners. You platters. Know, the platters. Drifters. You know, drifters. Smoke Robinson. Yeah. So you, yeah. you emulate these guys. Yeah. And you sing, and plus you put your own style. You know, you sound, pick up the harmony, and let you improvise with your sound. You know, we know our reggae feel is different from theirs. But the harmony is, is, is kind of close. Some of them similar. And we reverse these guys' songs. And um, I must tell you, we get a lot of influence by these guys. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then again, by listening to you know so many different singers, groups in in in, in our days, we, it's were more groups, you know. So we, we listen to a lot of groups, you know. Mm. Like I say, you know, you know the, 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 the Delphonics was my favorite group. The impressions, you know, I, those are my favorite groups and Spinners and all of that. So we develop that sound. So we try to develop a song. We listen to that song and we develop a song for ourselves. You know? So this is where we get this harmony. And, and, and in those days you have to be good. You couldn't be singing and not, not, your harmony is not right. You know? Um, I hear some big singers, very good, reputable singers, like good reputation, sing on a piece like Sunsplash and start half key. And I say, okay, do that. Continuous, right you. With us, it's a natural thing. Ear, you have to ear good. You know the musician, you have to ear good. If I hear it, let's go right into the note. It's just practice and... You see, they say music is a sound that is pleasing to the ears. So we make sure that it's pleasing to everyone here, just like what it's pleasing to your ears, you know? <laughs> so we try to develop, we develop that sound and we keep that sound and that like pattern with when us. When you're weary, yeah? you know? Sound like... When you're weary Feeling small when tears are in your eyes, I'll drive them all. Oh, I'm on your side. Oh, when times get rough and friends just can't be. Over 
troubled waters I will lay me down like a bridge over troubled waters I will lay me down Thank you. <laughs> it's gonna be natural, you know, it's like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, in, in those days, you were so glad to be a singer. Because when you're, when you're a singer in those days, you get a lot of things. You get a lot of things. You get a lot of girls. You get a lot of this. So you're paying attention to all of that. You know, and, and most of the, thing, the things that we should be paying attention to, we're doing all of that. You know, at, I, I had to complain that we weren't getting credits for this song. a lot of songs we haven't been getting no credits for all these songs. Then I started you know? complaining when we started to put credits on the albums. And I think we did, we did well managing ourselves. Yeah, because Tamu Kwan was supposed to be our manager. Yeah, we did well and managing ourselves. And Tamu Kwan left and opened his own company, left us alone. Yeah. <laughs> so in Jamaica, it's dog eat dog, you know. You know, dog eat dog, man. You gotta be on your own, help yourself. But despite having to overcome their share of adversity in the music business, the Tamlins prevailed. And in 1977, they were consigned to sing backup vocals on a world tour with one of the most prominent artists in reggae music, the one and only Peter Tosh, with promises of doing their own opening set. Reggae music. Well, I must tell you. Oh. I must tell you, tell you right? Yeah, talk. Um, <laughs> well, talk about it. All of you. Talk 19, about 1977, it. 1977, in Africa, Peter Tosh, you know, I live at Derma Road, and Peter Tosh was the universal across in the plaza. Yeah. I know, I realized that's my good friends, and, you know, and check for Bob and Peter. Sly and Robbie and Robin and Sterling, they were going on tour. So I went over there and I said, Sly and Robin, you need Tomlins. He said, yeah, I said, yes. He said, why? I said, I'll tell Peter. He said, yeah, Peter, come. I said, Peter, you need Tomlins on this tour, you know, to work with you. He said, why? I said, because Bob only have high trees, and you're going to have Tomlins. He said, you know, you're right. Come with us tomorrow. Because I wanted, I wanted, to re I wanted reggae to, to break out international. Because um, Bob Marlow was on his own, you know, trying, and I said, we can contribute, put our talent, but we made an agreement to open for Peter. In 77, we were like a Channel One studio and working, doing art to confess and that's life and thinking. So we said, okay, we're going to tour Peter, get international exposure, plus singing open. That didn't, that didn't happen. We didn't sing a, sing a note to Peter all the years, just backing vocals. That's another thing. So we, the first show was um, Grassman Hall. In 1980, no, 1977, Grassman Hall in Miami. And we went there and we did um, Guadalupe, Martinique, didn't work out. Um, but, um, Trinidad, Antigua. Yeah. And um, yes, that was big. That was your first thing that you did outside of Jamaica? Yes, with Peter Tosh. With, with Peter. Well, you're this. With Peter Tosh. Yeah, yeah, well, you're this. After we came back, here comes Ken Williams from um, WLIV in New York. Yeah. Take us down to New York to work with um, Joe Lindsay and the Paragons. So we went there you know, at um, Columbia, well, it was one of the university in New York, I forgot the name. But um, we, we marched up, you know, that was the first experience. And well, um, we had had songs playing out there before and because what what Ken used to do is that he would he would play your songs before you got there go there, you know? Yeah, man. So so you know Yeah, so yeah. you had to have songs out there. Yeah man. Because at the, at the time we had like four songs playing in New York. Yeah. Art to Confess, A Pop and Black Beauty and Thick and Thin. We had Art to Confess in the Channel One thing, thinking that's life. They were like, like bubbling in New York. So I couldn't believe. When I hear it playing in New York, there was a power play, like all five times in two hours. Yeah. On the radio, WLIB. Yeah, with um, Ken Williams. That was great. Ting and up. we had tingling in that time. Yeah. When tingling marched up the whole place uh, in England, we were touring Peter Josh in Europe. And we were, we were um, touring with the guy who was the a manager for EMI. He was managing like um, uh, Oliver Newton John. And he said, Tomlins, your song is kicking up hell in New York, in England. Well, um, you know those days in England when Jamaican arts go to England is like a big thing. And um, 
most singers take long to get to go to England, but we, we were touring that time, but we went to England, we paid the touch. But State Recording Company wanted to do a song, a wild bomb, Black Beauty. Big company in England. I think they're a subsidiary of Polydor. And we didn't we weren't told about that. We weren't told about that. When we went to England, we paid the touch and we go in the shops. We see it. Redesigned the album, we redesigned it. The front is called Black Beauty and we were, our picture was at the front. In England on shelf is a black girl in front and we our picture at the back. And they stayed recording company. And they they barely wouldn't give his record to no company without advance. And those days they were giving a lot of money. Like sixty a thousand pound, fifty a thousand pound. We didn't get a cent. Advance. Yet there were songs, the album was released and state recording com label. So it was that, was that was tough, you know. That was tough. I wrote to the company and Burnley was upset. But well, I don't care. We got we were being ripped off, you know. So I went to the shops and you know, see everything. But when we step in the shops in England, you know, all the record shop owners get jumpy and start hiding records, you know. Because we're gonna find out things now. They sell pre pre release. Pre -release. Yes, no. they release songs on twelve inch. And these songs will sell like three thousand copies. So can you imagine a guy release five times three, fifteen thousand? And pre release was more than four to fives. And we weren't getting a cent. We never get a cent of this this money. That's what Tingaling was taking off. Ready to go to the uh, pop of the top charts and they would not give this record to no big company. It's yeah. sad. There's so much thing to say, you know this song about so much thing to say right now. Yeah. So much thing to say. But sometimes you have to let some of these things die, you know? Die. Sometimes you don't want to resurrect all these things. Cause it's history, sometimes it's they, they, they're yeah. hurt and they grieving you, you know. Sometimes you say things that you don't want to say. So we came back from Europe. We stopped in England to the show the rainbow. So we stopped in the hotel and the other guys get tired, you know. But I saw at under my, under my door, I saw an invitation from Islands Record to come to Third World launch of the album, you know that we found love. And I sent the limousine for the Tamlins. So I said, I gotta go. So I, you know, I'm, I'm well dressed in my, my, my suit. <laughs> when I went to this venue in London, I couldn't believe what I heard. As I stepped to the door, they were waiting on me. As I stepped to the door, I could hear the introduction. You know, they always wait on the, the guests, the artists. And the camera, when I went to the door, I could hear. Yeah. It took a little introduction, and the people were getting wild. The song was beginning, I didn't know it was beginning in England. And the guy who did it for archive didn't give EMI. They wanted to just sell it themselves, try to export it to Africa, he and his brother, sell it locally, and hold us back. In 1983, the Tamlins parted ways with Peter Tosh under less than friendly circumstances. Carlton Smith explains. In 83, you know, we tore our world with Peter and then um, I did a couple of albums with Peter. And then um, Peter, when we came back from Australia, Peter sent a letter with Copeland Forbes with some incorrect spelling that they can't afford me and Juno no more. We are good friends that we no more employed to Peter. And they took our partner Morgan to go with them. With Steve Golden playing sing, playing a singing harmony and this guy Vision, you know, Vision is singing every time all the solets. Vision Walker? Yes. And take our partner. So I was vexed. So here comes Derek. We just you know, we don't know Derek, I Derek was a drummer from um seventh extension. Nineteen eighty-three. Nineteen eighty-three. Yeah. Well, I joined the Tamlins. Now I was playing in a band called the Seventh Extension. Yeah. So Junior brother was playing in this band, Seventh Extension. He was bass playing player. bass. Yeah. Tony Moore, you know. Junior used to came to the rehearsal, you know, and used to take in the vibes. So that happened that one day, you know, when the group Morgan left the group, you now that's how Junior came to me and said, "Well, they need someone to join the group, you know." And I thought I was the best person, so. They say I, they didn't really fire us, you know. Why? What happened? We 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 knew a lot of stuff. We knew a lot of things that was going on. And if you talk, what you know, sometimes you know what had happened. And we didn't get the chance to really open for Peter Tosh. Not a, not a note. That was something that we really wanted to do. 
there's there, there were some guys. guys who don't want you to get close to they Peter. They were very jealous of Peter. Guys you know, who were really They always want to stick with Peter. They but don't want you okay. to get too close. Because you know, cause, you know when Jerry Giannis, so, you know, here comes Martin Griffiths. Martin said, Tom Lins, I want you guys to come in England. You know? I want you guys to back me and open the show. Open, sing like Tom Lins. Yeah, Martin 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 respect we do, Martin, without, yeah. without any rehearsal with a band called Maniaca from New York. We didn't rehearse at all the band. We went straight on stage and did a show. She oh. said, darling. <laughs> very, very nice lady. And Tamlin said that. Yeah. Big up. <laughs> Tamlin saying that. And we're, gonna work and we're still saying that. And we can't leave our sister Rita Marley. No, know? no way. Because you know, no. we toured Rita yeah, for many years. As backing so vocals and opening Backing for vocals. And she let us open. That was a good thing. Rita yeah. Marley. Africa. She took us to Africa. She opened for Two Rita times. Marley. She Three times. Let yeah. Us, yeah. Yeah, we went to um, Ethiopia, one of Bob Marley Day. Mm. 500,000 people in um, Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa in Moscow Square. And we went to, that was big, all the, all the, all the Marley kids were there, and Swagger Benz and some Ethiopian artists. And that, those were the days when Baltimore was really hitting charge and moving. <laughs> Baltimore tingling, Foo for Thoughts, no. all the songs were very big in England. They yeah. beloved all yeah. the songs, Tomlin's songs, because they were on 12 inch. And we were in um, the Rainbow with Peter Josh one night, one, one time. Mm. And you know, Peter, sometimes he get carried away and he curses a lot, you know, a lot of stuff. And he, the audience were like, were clapping and laughing. And they said, Shut up your mouth! <laughs> Boom, my cloud, you know, you may attack. <laughs> Excuse my expression, yeah? yeah. And let me tell you something. Yeah. When Peter walked off the stage. But the people were getting very annoyed with Peter. And Robin Sly went back on stage. And they started to play Baltimore introduction. Trust me. That was Baltimore at the time. Because they were 90, black beard, Bunny Lee were in the audience. And when, when Robin Sly played, boom, 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 the place pop up. And we didn't sing a note with Peter for all the years of tour, all over the world. And we went to Baltimore now. Tell him. Tell him, man. We went to Baltimore and didn't sing Baltimore in Baltimore, Tomlins. <laughs> With and, Peter Tosh. Yeah, yes, and it was on stage. And, and the same thing Robbie did. Start playing the Baltimore line, bass line, just, just you know, just playing around. And I tell the crowd went wild and we didn't sing a note. We couldn't get a single and note. People came to us off boxing and said, I can't believe you guys come to Baltimore and don't sing Baltimore. Could you believe that? I'm, I'm mad. <laughs> sing the chorus now. Can you sing it right now? Number one, number one, one old place. Murder. Boom. See a little seagull. Right on my stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to find the ocean. Yes. Looking everywhere. Hard times in the city. In a hot town by the sea, yeah. And then I got nowhere to run to. There ain't nothing there for free. Cup around the corner. He's drunk, lying on the sidewalk, sleeping in the rain. Hey. Good people had their faces, and they had their eyes. Hey. And all these idiots dying, and they don't know why.
that involved. Ain't going back there. <laughs> Yeah, man. That was a monster tune. Someone speak by Sly. No, just speak by me. Not Sly, by me. Sly had the songs. Sly had some songs yeah. on, a, on a cassette. He had his songs on a, on a cassette. But he had a song for us to do. It was Laying Beside You. That was the song he was talking about to do, for us to do. So he was trying to find the song, Laying Beside You, because there was a lot of songs on the tape, on a cassette tape. And he was playing the song to, 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 to you know, run it down to, to the song that he wanted us to do. But, but when he was playing the, the thing, I heard that song Baltimore. So I said to him, Sly, I love that song too, you know. That song is so good enough. He said, yeah. I said, yeah, man, I love that one. He said, all right, OK. He said, play it again for me. And I said, yes, Sly, I have to do this one. And he said, OK, we'll do both of them. We'll do Lane Beside You and Baltimore. Together. Yeah, but, well, yeah. Baltimore's the most, the more popular Baltimore song, you know? Yeah. International. Because you know, Baltimore yeah. went on albums called Jamming, you know the album? It's a compilation. Yeah. With some islands artists. Double double platinum. And Baltimore's in that, 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 that album. And we, we gain yes. nothing from that. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Again. <laughs> Again. And we love to we have to give much to, uh, thanks and love to, to Robbie and Sly too, you know. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Have cool. to, you know. They were the ones who the Robbie? greatest drummer in the world, man. The great Robbie and Sly. The greatest yeah, bass player top. When we were at Dynamic Sounds. And now uh, you see here these songs playing, you know, with Diamonds and Wailing Soul. And want to go and get and you know, Channel One, Joe George was my good friend and Mighty Diamonds were very close. And I said, come to come to Channel One man. And I used to go to the club and I hear these songs playing. And Sly, I play drums and Robbie and Ranchi and bass. Sometimes light bars play too. This, this is just, just like Motown. You know when Motown took off in America? They saw Robbie and Sly and these guys change the sound of reggae. And I think them changed the whole music thing in Jamaica from the classic uptown reggae to the reggae now. Then, you know, the 70s, the Black Hole, the Tamlins, the Jimmy Riley. The vice rise, come on. Now. We were yeah. a part of the tax again. Yeah, it's all coming from Channel One Studios, Stan Robbie and Anse Collins, all the great, all the great musicians, you know. And you know, Channel One was a was a studio that killed with the drum and bass. And then yeah, man, they love that kind of vibe to the dance you know, hall, you know. It becomes a too. part of a, a, another generation, and and this is why they call dance all song. But sometimes it's Probably. not it's not just a song, you know, because they were the one who. We're in the dance hall. That's how they get their break in the dance hall. So it becomes just a pattern. It becomes a name, and it becomes everything wide open there. You know. I must tell you, people forget this guy, you know. You see this guy named Johnny Nash? Yeah, he was one Johnny Nash is one of the first guys who first embraced guy. reggae. Yeah, Cupid yeah. and all these songs, you know. Go for jelly. I can see clearly. I can see clearly. No, Johnny Nash is the guy, man. I love this guy, man. And plus this guy from Miami named Eddie Lovert, True Experience. Yeah. He died now, God bless his soul. These American guys who took up reggae and helped with it, you know. Love them for that. The one who sing, um, I Shot the Sheriff, Eric Clapton. Eric oh, Clapton, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, people yeah. like um, Herbie Mann. Yeah. Herbie Mann came to Jamaica and did a whole album reggae. Yeah. Herbie Mann, the, yeah, the, the, the flute player. Yeah. Yes. Herbie yeah. Mann came to Jamaica, man. All the great musicians played for him, man. And, you know, as a young singer, watching what's going on, I know I feel so good to see this American big flutist come to Jamaica and play the reggae. You know, and. Like if you live in Jamaica, this roots, the real sound is, is like in Jamaica. But in, in Europe now, in Europe, there's some bands over there, some white guys playing reggae. You can't believe. Reggae is big in Europe. It's the biggest market right now. And to tell you the truth, biggest market. If we, the Jamaican musicians, 
Don't stand up strong. These guys are gonna take it over. Because you know what I'm saying? When you're in the change room in Europe at the festival, you these guys play, say, who's out there, Robin Sly? Who the light box? I mean, look, he's some white dread. Playing roots rock reggae. Love them for that, man. Yeah, man. And these guys, their mother and their father used to follow Peter Touch and Bob Marley. Mm. I said, these youngsters don't come and play reggae. No, it's, it's marvelous, man. Wonderful. Yeah, man. That's what we wanted all this time, people to embrace the music and love it. At least they help spreading the music, you know? Yeah. And Bob I, um, Marley was saying, and Peter was saying, reggae is the people's music. People. Because uh, there, were, there were times when reggae music couldn't be played on the radio. In the 60s, 70s coming up. You know, so know that these guys, we, 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 these guys are playing it now. It's, it's something good for us. And it's, and group, Next yeah. generation will, will be coming to here and, and knowing about reggae. Japan is so wonderful. The people when so we nice. went down, they were surprised. Yeah, man. Because we see everything, everything saying reggae. Everything from a towel to a shoe, red, to gold, a cap, green belt, to a, whatever you can think of. Red, mm -hmm. green, and gold. Reggae. Um, very, very big. Japan I think make reggae sunsplash in Jamaica look this small. 100,000 <laughs> yeah. people yeah. In, in Tokyo. People like this. <laughs> Could you imagine that? 100,000 people in Tokyo. I know what surprised me, Sarah Carlton. Yeah. Um, what surprised me? They can't speak English. Yes, yeah. right. And the power of the reggae music, the yeah. gravity to them. The first time we were in Japan, we yeah. were we, with Judy Mott, Tony Tuff, and Tamlins. We, yeah. were, we were going to be the first reggae act to go on Japan TV. We were in the studio rehearsal to go live. We were, we were, we were going to sing um, Stand By Me. When the night was gone. And we were there and said, okay, stand by. Stand by. Three minutes, uh, two minutes to go. And we were there and Five minutes we can't hear nothing. We said, what's up? Then we see some people, Japanese passing, crying. We said, what's happening? Five minutes, they can't start the show. I said, what's happening? Guess what? The Japanese movie star, like US Elvis Presley, he died. And the whole Japan was crying. He was a famous Japanese actor and he was a singer. And we were, we were standing by to go to Japan TV. We were going to break a record. The first, Reggae group to go on Japan live. That was many history. You know, so we we tried many times and we got set back, you know what you know. By the way, it's two different hearts, yeah. Sing it the heart. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. Well, from us a youth, you know, from us a child, you know, I used to love, you know, sit and draw a lot of things. I just draw anything. I just keep drawing and drawing. And then, I, you know, 20 years ago, I started painting. And the primary school I went to. They used to have art class every Thursday. Yeah. And so, you know, all of us used to do painting, but Junior was take it serious and as a career, you know, he used to work with a design company that make billboards. It's not because I know him, man, but he's one of the best artists right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we have this new album called Crossroads. New album called Crossroads. You have a CD? You can talk. Yeah, let's show them a CD here. Alright. Yeah. 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 This is our latest album right now. It's called Crossroads. Can you get a close up on that? And this is a real Tamlins. This is Tamlins, Tamlins. <laughs> All songs written by Tamlins Black Derek Beauty. Lara and Juno Moore. And and the, this this album only has one cover song on it. So all the rest of the songs written by Derek and Junior Moore. This is Tamlin's for real. We're at the crossroads. <laughs> yeah. Making more music, 
you know that's our main objective right now making more music singing more love sweet songs for the world and hope for the best that's all we can do you know we like to give thanks you know most of the fans and who had uh, been with us all these years you know and still still hanging on to Tamlins we give much love for that you know so and to yeah. all the great singers and players of instrument, you know, just all the faith. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. We're just, we're just singing sweet songs, same way, and be positive. Hope that reggae will catch on more places all the world and people embrace it. And we want to say, for those who love it, thank you for that, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. We want to. And keep You're sharing this music, you know? so we appreciate that and we love you for that, you know. Sure. Keep up the good works, brothers. Keep up the good works. Mm. Yeah, man. Hi. I'm Carlton Smith from the Tamlin. Oh yes, <laughs> over there. Hi, Hi. I'm Carlton Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you. Yeah. I'm Carlton Smith from the Tamlins. Yours truly, JJ Junior Moore. And I'm Ragamuffin Derek Lara. <laughs> and you're tuning to Reggae, 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 reggae TV reggae. show. TV show. With Richie reggae Rich. Music. <laughs> TV show. Reggae music. TV show. Reggae music TV show with Richie Rich. <laughs> thank you, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. And we thank you for loving our thing, you know? Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Loving this group. This group been through a lot. Yes, stills, you guys. So, so your still. love will keep us going. <laughs> one for all. Mm -hmm. Come in, brother. One. Come in. Let's take a shot. One for all. Yes, man. One for all. Yeah. Yeah. All for one. Yeah. On Reggae TV. We're with Reggae Rich. We're with Reggae Rich now. Well, Tamlin's, Tamlin's got rich now. <laughs> <laughs> Tamlin's got rich. Tamlin's got rich now. <laughs> yeah. What love, man. Beautiful, man. Yeah, right. That was a good afternoon with some really great people. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Thank you very much to the Tamlins, and a special thanks to Gail Zucker who made that whole meeting possible. If you want to know more about the Tamlins, go online, download some of their music, Roots Reggae, you're going to love the Tamlins. If you want to know more about Reggae TV, find us at YouTube, at Reggae TV USA, a whole bunch of other places, but whatever platform you're watching us on, please let us know. We want to hear from you. Until next time, I'm Mr. Rich, you know who you are, thank you so much for being here. Peace.